In this video, I'm going to show you one of the coolest eco projects that are happening here in El Salvador. And it's from, not a Salvadoran, but a gringo that is transplanted here and is trying to make the best and raise the country all that he can. Let's go check it out. Okay, so we are here with Aaron Murphy of Murph's Life, and you can check out his foundation down in the link below. And he has lived in throughout Latin America for how long? Like 23? Um, eight, eight, 10 years. Oh, only eight, 10 years? Uh -huh. Really? Yeah. Wow. But you've like- 12 countries. 12 countries. In 12 countries. In the last eight, 10 years. Yeah. Right? And if you check out his video, you will see like his kind of- his vibe is he goes there and kind of shock surprises the people with just blessing them kind of from nowhere. You don't really like tell people you're coming. You just kind of jump yeah, in. Everything. I like the surprise effect. Yeah. You go in yeah. there and just say, Hey, pupusas for everybody for the next hour. Yeah. And I love, I love the reaction of the people. And I love how afterwards just the smiles and just the, you know, it just brings hope. Yeah. But I think that's the thing I like the most about your channel. So now he is. Here in El Salvador, why of all those different countries, why did you choose SV? I like El Salvador because, one, I have a two-year-old daughter. So for me, the biggest thing is security. I've lived in Brazil. I've lived in Mexico, Ecuador. And just those three countries, I've seen dead people. You know, I've, I've lived in the States. And I saw, uh, I was in about five shootings in the States in a lot of bars where people just get drunk and start shooting it up. But these are countries, talking about Latin America, these are countries that are really violent, um, have friends that their parents, their kids were kidnapped for ransom, they get the kids back. And now that I have a child, I want to live in a place that I don't have to worry about my daughter, my wife taking my kid to school, like, oh, I, I don't have a bulletproof vehicle, I don't have, you know, the... So I, that's the number one. Number two is I love how, like, El Salvador is a few hour flight to the States to go oh, visit yeah. family. It's, it's no different than someone living in California and then their other family living in like Nashville. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's actually, what is it like two hours to Miami, three hours yeah, to Miami? A little bit of a little over two hours to Miami. It's three hours to Atlanta. That's usually where I go. And yeah. That's, it's only three hours, you know? So I still kind of feel like I'm at home. And I, the, the third reason that I really like this is, and this is, this is kind of what I, my analogy is everyone in life goes through something really difficult. We all, everyone will eventually get sick or have a family member who goes through cancer. And, and, and if you can think of like one of those moments where that thing that you're praying to God, like, God, I have this, this uh, trial in my life. And I really need you to take this off my cup. I need you to take this off my shoulder. And that moment when God finally says, okay, now you've learned the lesson in life. I'm going to remove this from you. You have that amazing, like joy and, and release. release. Uh -huh. um, and, and that'll usually last for a year. And then all of a sudden we're like, God, now I need you to get rid of this. <laughs> but this country right now, everyone was controlled by the gangs. Everyone had to pay extortion. Everyone had to worry about their kids getting kidnapped and had their kids kidnapped. Everyone has a family member or a cousin that they know that just disappeared, never returned. That's yeah. buried somewhere in, in these forests here. So now having that weight off an entire country's back, is a beautiful, beautiful energy. You know, I don't like using oh, yeah. that energy. It's too hippie, but it is a beautiful energy. It's a beautiful, like to see people are so welcoming and loving. And, uh, that, that's, I, I really enjoy that. You know? Yeah. And, and that's, it's kind of like sometimes I do an, an analogy in the videos in the States. I used to work with abuse victims. Yeah. And when you get someone out of an abusive situation, it's like the relief is amazing, but you have to start setting a new pattern because if not, I mean, those same habits, those same what you see as comfort, what you see as normal will yeah. come back. And so it's like El Salvador is like a whole country of people finally liberated. But the big key, I think, and that people are trying to do is it's about now it's about action. Now it's about not just sitting here saying, oh, yeah, I can go everywhere. It's like now what do you want to create? Now it's time to build your dreams. Now yeah. it's time to you have this freedom. Now you have the responsibility to use it to to build and dream and create and and get to work and to start to do the things that you couldn't do before because i mean at least with my with my old clients is if they if they started to create and they started to feel kind of their own power yeah. and they then when the old abusive connection would come back 
they would say, oh, no, uh-uh, I not don't think that. so. I'm not having that. I've tasted a new life of freedom and personal responsibility, and I'm not going back to the old ways. Yeah. Whereas if they don't get in action, if they don't start creating a new life, new habits, then when the old abuser comes back, whether it be a government abuser, whether it be an old spouse or something like that, they'll be like, it's just like they say the same little rhetoric and, oh, I'll give you the easy life. Oh, you know, I love you, baby. And then they'll go back into that same pattern again because yeah. it's what they know. And that's the one thing that I love that El Salvador, I think El Salvador is doing very differently than some people that criticize, oh, well, other Latin American countries have gone through the same thing, but they always fall back to the same pattern. I'm like, you know what? But this is different because the Salvadorans are getting in motion. They're starting to produce. They're doing the agromercados. Yeah. They're starting to build and create more. And they're and the, tour, the, the, the tourism is what's really cool. And this is what I, I really enjoy. I just went and stayed with the three young sisters mm-hmm. and they saved up all their money. One's a dentist, one's a doctor. The other one's a botanist for, with plants. Uh-huh. They saved up all their money. They got a loan and they opened up a hostel. And that's kind of like, it, that that's the beauty now of seeing tourism ignite and seeing so many people become entrepreneurs down here. Yeah. Not only with the, with the new people moving in, but the locals, you know, I've seen a lot of people where they're starting to build Airbnbs on the top of their homes. And it's, it's really, really cool. And it's creating kind of that culture and people are really becoming empowered to where when there's always a pendulum shift in all economies and all yeah. governments, I think the people will be ready and say, okay, no more of, yeah, you know, because it's the opportunity. The tourism has created that opportunity where they're like, okay, I think I can dream. I'm going to try. I'm going to try this new dream. Yeah. And whereas in the past, risk never paid off. Share exactly about all these new opportunities. What new opportunities are you giving here in this little project little project yeah. that you are creating here for the locals? This right here is... um. Basically, we're starting a micro economy. This is a place that is very poor. People have been used to making $75 biweekly. So now what we're doing is we're coming in here and we're paying minimum wage, which is already changing a lot of their lives uh, as we're building this. So the whole idea of this is we have a school across that's under construction. So they're going to get a quality education. We're getting money from this restaurant and hotel, store, greenhouse. We have, uh, and then soon we'll have a dentist and a doctor's office. So all of this money that comes in kind of all over the place left that we're doing here we have about five businesses on here that's in this micro economy and all of the people here are going to become entrepreneurs so we're going to have a pay scale look if we hit this ten thousand fifty thousand a hundred thousand it's going to go up to 25 percent. so the whole and i've done this before in mexico i've done it in ecuador uh we've taken families who once made five dollars a day and i've helped families to make up to two to five thousand dollars a month latinos and this is you know, so now how can we do this for an entire community? Uh-huh. We ed- First off, we educate the kids. We give them a great education. Uh-huh. You stay here, you eat here. You can literally see the school on the other side and you know that it's going towards quality. The kids are going to learn English. It's almost like they're going to have the same opportunity that a rich family puts their kids in a private school. Yeah. Um, it might not be that level of an education, but that's the, the idea. The second thing is now everyone gets profit share. So we want to be able awesome. to see. That is what El Salvador needs. Some profit share, some equity. Yep. And yeah. everyone here from the gardener to the woman washing your clothes to the management, they all are going to get an equal profit share as long as you are working as if you're an owner. That's kind mm-hmm. of our thing here. If you want to work for a company, go work for another farm. But if yeah. you if you treat this as if it's your own, you're the owner, then you, this is the place that you can stay. So the idea is how can we take our 100 employees? Right now we have 138. How can we take 138 employees that live on dirt floors, metal shacks, mm-hmm. and teach them how to build their beautiful brick home? And rental units on top for yep. more tourism, for backpackers. You know, how can we have them send their kids to a good university after a school? Their kids will learn English and now they can get paid. You know, people who speak English or Latinos, we're, they're paying yeah. up to a, th- we're paying up to a thousand dollars a month, you yeah. know? So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it creates a huge change. Um, at, now we are building, we're getting ready to build a doctor and dentist office. So now you can come here in the States. It's expensive. You know, it can oh. cost $20,000. You come here, get all your teeth fixed, let's say five to $7,000. You can stay in a five-star resort, beautiful place, organic juices, organic soups. Uh, get all your teeth fixed, get all your blood work done, see if you don't have any cancer or AIDS or anything like that. Yeah. And, um, and knowing at the same time, you're supporting the local economy, the school, and our uh, six women's shelters that we have for South America. So that's oh. the purpose of this. 
microeconomy. Yeah, because that's the, it's like some people say like, oh, well, how is this different from colonization is because colonization is like you said, working for a company and you just get their pay and that's it. But this isn't colonization. It's about coming back to impact the locals to raise the whole community together. Yeah. Because it's really lonely at the top. So why be there by yourself? Yeah. And, and this, I don't pull a salary from any of these resorts that we build. Mm -hmm. This is all for the locals. I just take my regular salary from, from the foundation, mm -hmm. but this is the whole purpose of it. Taking these people and we helped a lot of them. Now they have enough money and we teach them now. Okay. Build a little store for your grandma taking care of your kids inside of your living room. Um, mm -hmm. I teach people how to make Airbnbs up top where they can make 50 mm -hmm. to a hundred bucks a night. Yeah. And so now we're taking families $75 before biweekly to now making up to a thousand dollars and it continues to grow as they become their own entrepreneurs. So this is the whole difference of this. It's literally, it's a, it's a micro economy that we develop for, for the people. Uh, it's at the same time, it brings in tourism, it, it's organic food and, and the community that we're eventually going to bring here is not about like, okay, you move into our community, how the normal community sense, right? Cause that always goes to shit. It always goes crazy. Yeah. Uh -huh. The purpose of this is the idea eventually is I want people to build another coffee shop here. I want people to build a little pizza shop, a little ice cream shop, a little, yeah. you know what I mean? Because this is such an amazing, uh, area, real estate. And, and this is what always what I do is we have to find a plus real estate. Yeah. A lot of people say, Aaron, you shouldn't spend millions of dollars on real estate. It's not smart, but they don't know anything about economy. They don't know anything about building businesses. So I just choose to ignore them. Yeah. This is when we choose, uh, and this is from successes, right? When we find a plus real estate and we build quality structures and have quality food, the people will come. Yeah. You know, and so that's, this is the whole purpose is creating entrepreneurs. We want to create thousands of entrepreneurs, educate their kids. They're going to be the new politicians. We want to show them real love, you know, without extortion, without sexual abuse, without mm -hmm. which the gangs here was filled with that crap. You oh, know? completely. Yep. So that's the idea of this. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for yeah. showing us your, your little Eden that you have growing here. And if you are thinking about coming down to El Salvador, would like to come to Aaron's place, or would like to come see what possibilities El Salvador might have in your future, check out livinglikelocal.com down below, and we will explore your dreams and what you're thinking about for your future. Hi, I'm Jenny Addy, shining my light so you can shine yours. See you next time.